the use of deer densities, deer per square mile, it's, it's easy. It's simple to, to tell people about. It's easy for them to process when I say we measured 104 deer per square mile and then say uh, studies have shown for numerous impacts that 10 deer per square mile is where you should be. It's very easy to, to tell someone there's 10 times too many deer. That's easy for, for people to register, even if they don't know anything about ecology at all. Okay, it's 10 times too many. I understand what 10 times too many means. That's a lot, that's way too many. But it's a distraction in some ways because it makes it seem like my only goal is to have less deer. My goal isn't to have less deer, it's to have healthy forests that function. If I start to measure increases in the vegetation response in a forest and it starts to fill up again and the forest can actually start to grow trees, that's the most important thing. If a forest can grow trees, you have a shrub layer, you have wildflowers in the forest, I'm okay with whatever number of deer that is that's associated with that. So this is a hickory seedling and you can see that you know all of these tips have been browsed by deer. Often with the cases in New Jersey and, and anywhere with overabundant deer is that you have um, an empty forest. So does are driving the population. Females of any species of any population are, are what drives the population. For many recreational hunters, it's all about taking a buck. If you take a buck, it does really nothing for the population other than remove that one, that one animal. If you take does, if you take females out of the population, you know, then you're having the ability to reduce the population or keep it from growing as fast. I understand the history of hunting, which is when you actually had to hunt for food, you always targeted the male deer because for one, it was twice the size and fed more people in your family. And you never shot does because you wanted them to resupply next year's crop because you couldn't just go to a food store and buy your food. So I get the concept. If you look back in time on the old pictures, it's always bucks hanging. They never ever shot a doe ever. That's history just ingrained in the people's heads that that's what you're supposed to do, but times are different. I mean, you have to evolve with the times. Uh, no, I have no desire to shoot a trophy buck. To me, I, I just validate each hunt as a success by the number of deer that I harvest. Just something I've always been good at, so you basically focus on applying what you're good at and you want to be the best at it, so I put as much effort into it as needed to be the best, to be at the top of the game. You know, when I started deer, deer management uh, in Hopewell, in particular, I'd done some other work in Warren County. Um, but the answer was, yes, that'll be a piece of cake. And then you get the results back at the end of the year, and it's not what you intended. It was lower than what your quotas were. When you start a deer management program, you don't know what the hunters are going to do. You're not a mind reader. You have hunters in the program. If they don't meet your quota, then you have to ask them to leave. And then over time, you build up a core of hunters that no arm twisting is required. The average hunter shoots less than six deer. And there's 80,000 hunters in the state of New Jersey, so they're not shooting a lot of deer. I'm at the extreme level, what I'm doing, where but all we're asking is for people to shoot, even if you shoot one or two more deer than you normally would a year. If you, the average person shoots three deer, try to shoot five deer. That's it, and, th and that adds up over the amount of hunters. You take one doe out over a 10 year period, it could, be, it could equal 150 deer that you eliminated over a 10 year period. Because every one of them is gonna have an offspring, it's gonna have two offspring, three offspring, it's like a cycle. So it doesn't matter if it's a young fawn or an older fawn, it, it's still a deer and in these programs it counts as a number. And that's what you need to focus on is the numbers.
there's some people that are just dead set in their ways. You'll never change their views or values. So you really need to have a class like this where you're going to find one or two people. So you may, you may talk to 100 people and you only find two people that are willing to practice management hunting. And that's what you're looking for, one person at a time. I thought about hunting for probably two years before I decided to actually do it. And that was more or less because I felt like it took a lot of time to sit and think about like, you know, the act of killing a large animal, you know, very intimately, like being only 15 yards from it and taking its life and then going to, you know, that took me time to work through in my own mind to make sure that once I invest in uh, gear and whatnot and time and licenses and all this stuff that uh, it would be something I would follow through with. So I just took my time kind of thinking about it a lot and deciding if it was really the thing I wanted to do. An adult onset hunter is simply someone that didn't grow up with hunting passed down to them, so they have to kind of figure it out all on their own when they're older, and often these people don't have any friends or family or any connection to the culture or a way of getting into it, which is what my situation was. So how does one go about learning what they need to do to hunt? Honestly, I mostly went the way of just the internet and Google. I've always kind of been a big kind of obsessive self-learner, like once, I, I learned fishing this way too. Another good thing to do, by the way, if you're starting out hunting is just to go on a forum. So there's a New Jersey hunter forum online. But yeah, even on there, I, I feel like a bit of an outcast in that circle, especially on just like a cultural and political and like sociological level. It, there, it's like such a specific kind of um, culture that I don't really have any part in other than hunting. It drives me kind of crazy because in my opinion, hunting is like the most liberal, progressive thing you can do as a meat eater. And, and yet the entire hunting culture is, is very conservative. And you know, they, they, I see jokes all the time cracked like, oh, I saw this Prius, you know, in the parking lot. As if like that means like what, you could drive a Prius and also be a hunter. I don't, you know, I had all these like connections and stuff. It's just very much a cultural divide. I've been hunting a lot and I did take a shot on a deer last week and very upsettingly missed somehow or I nicked, I think, the brisket, the deer. And it's very disheartening when that happens um, because in target shooting, I'm, you know, I feel practically perfect. Like, oh my God, how could I ever miss? And then you miss and yeah, you, you really don't feel very good about it. You can see that lots and lots of deer have been here. This isn't all just my own doing of walking around, you know. This is a major area of deer movement. And right here we have a little deer trail. That was one of the reasons why I chose this spot. All right, here we are. We're basically on a 20 acre plot of woods right now on the edge of this field. And there's, you know, it's an unbelievable amount of white oak in this woods and there's just sign of deer everywhere, basically eating all the understory and, and shrubs of kind of like young maples and young oaks. Well, probably one of the coolest lessons I've learned being in the woods with deer is to never assume that they're not there just because you can't see them or hear them. Almost every time deer show up, it's sort of like out of nowhere. like you're gazing in this direction and you think you would see them coming from really far away and slowly approach you. I mean, that happens too sometimes, but so often it's more like I'm gazing and gazing and suddenly they're 30, 40 yards away and I'm like, oh, how'd you get here? And like, how did I not hear you? And I find that so cool. And it's kind of changed the way I look at the wilderness now because I think a lot of people assume if they look around and don't see deer, that there's no deer there. You'd be surprised, there's probably deer everywhere. We are on their turf in a way, but that's exactly the problem that I want to see kind of fixed as a new breed of hunter comes, because viewing it as their turf makes us feel like we're aliens encroaching on natural space or wild space, but we're just as wild as any animal. We've just domesticated ourselves and taken ourselves out of it. But I mean, we're still, you know, a species on this planet all the same. So it's part of why hunting is so great. You get to be come that again and you start to like feel like you're a part of the wild space just as much as the deer is.
I'm glad that I didn't take a bad or risky shot at this point because after having minced, missed once already, I really don't want to take a, a risky shot. I want to take a really ideal shot. It's going all right. I just shot my first deer. Yeah, it went right through the heart. It's ideal. Looks like it maybe even went like, like that. See, yeah, yeah, look, that's what it did. It went and that busted open the heart. How's it feel? Feels very good. I've been hunting a lot, a ton. So like maybe four to five days a week at number 3.30 in the morning, so to finally, you know, get it done is an amazing feeling. All right, so what would I say to someone watching this in the audience that isn't sure what they think about deer hunting due to cruelty? I would say it's, for one, it's, it's a really complex thing, you know, and very much like a personal choice. I don't think there's a right or wrong choice. It's not like deer hunting is right and, you know, X or Y is right and X or Y is wrong. I, I do think it's, if you eat meat and you still have a problem with deer hunting, I think that's kind of crazy, actually, if you think, you know, pretty deep about it, like it is, the highest moral ground you can stand on as a meat eater. I'm not opposed to trophy buck hunting. Like I said, each person has their own niche in the world. Uh, I just choose to do the management side. It most suits me. We need young hunters, and we certainly need young hunters that have the sort of conservation type of ethic. Not just conservation of deer for future deer hunting, but the entire ecological system. We're not growing new trees in the forest. And it's like just a completely fundamental concept. What do you mean you can't grow a tree in a forest? <laughs> um, that's what forests do, right? 